Yale President Timothy Dwight discovered a plot to destroy Christianity when he was president of Yale University. He was the grandson of Princeton President Jonathan Edwards, and he could read age four. He entered Yale University at the age of 13. He was chaplain of the Continental Army until his father died. When, as the eldest of 13 children, he worked for the family farm to pay off debts. He was Massachusetts' first state legislator. Timothy Dwight IV. He was Yale's fourth president from 1795 to 1817. In 22 years, he created Yale's departments of chemistry, geology, law, and medicine. He founded a theological seminary. He pioneered women's education and was critical of slavery and the encroachment of Indian lands. During his term, Yale grew from 110 to 313 students, with one of his students, Samuel Morse, inventing the telegraph. Yale was originally a Puritan college, and students had begun to become enticed by the French infidelity and the deist cult of reason. Dwight met with students and answered their questions on faith. By the time of his death on January 11, 1817, not only had a third of the graduates proclaimed Christianity, but 30 entered into the ministry. On July 4, 1798, Timothy Dwight gave an address in New Haven titled, The Duty of Americans at the Present Crisis, in which he explained how Voltaire's atheism inspired the French Revolution and its reign of terror from 1793 to 1794, where 40,000 people were beheaded. This is what the president of Yale said. About the year 1728, Voltaire so celebrated for his wit and brilliancy and not less distinguished for his hatred of Christianity and his abandonment of principle, formed a systematical design to destroy Christianity and to introduce in its steadfast a general diffusion of irreligion and atheism. He continued, for this purpose, he associated himself with Frederick II, King of Prussia, and other men who were principal compliers of the encyclopedia, all men of talents, atheists in the like manner abandoned. He continued by saying, the principal parts of this system were, one, the creation of the encyclopedia, in which the doctrines of Christian theology were rendered absurd and ridiculous and the mind of the reader was insensibly steered against conviction and duty. 2. The overthrow of the religious orders in Catholic countries, a step essentially necessary to the destruction of religion professed in those countries. 3. The establishment of the sect of philosophers to serve, it is presumed as a conclave, a rallying point for their followers. 4. The appropriation to themselves and their disciples of the places and honors of members of the French Academy, the most respectable literary society in France, and always considered as containing none but men of prime learning and talents. In this way, they designed to hold out themselves and their friends as the only persons of great literary and intellectual distinction in that country, and to dictate all literary options to the nation. Five the fabrication of books of all kinds against Christianity, especially such as exile doubt and generate contempt and desertion. Of these they issued by themselves and their friends who early became numerous, an immense number, so printed as to be purchased for little or nothing, and so written as to catch the feelings, the emotions of every class of men. Six the formation of a secret academy in which Voltaire was the standing president and in which books were formed, altered, forged, and imputed to deceased writers of reputation and sent abroad with the weight of their names. These were printed and circulated at the lowest price possible through all classes of men in all interrupted succession and through every part of the kingdom. Timothy Dwight concluded, in societies of Illumini, the being of God was denied and ridiculed. 
the possession of property was pronounced robbery. Chastity and natural affection were declared to be nothing more than groundless prejudices. Adultery, assassination, poisoning, and other crimes of the like were taught as lawful, provided that the end was good. The good ends proposed by the Illumini are to overthrow the religion, government, and human society, civil and domestic. These they propose to be so good that murder, butchery, and war, however extended and dreadful, are declared by them to be completely justifiable. The means were the education of youth. Every unprincipled civil officer, every abandoned clergyman, Books repeat with infidelity, irreligion, immorality, and obscenity. He continued, Where religion prevails, Illumini cannot make disciples. A French directory cannot govern, a nation cannot be made slaves, nor villains, nor atheists, nor beasts. To destroy us, therefore, in this dreadful sense, our enemies first must destroy our Sabbath, and seduce us from the house of God. Timothy Dwight concluded, Religion and liberty are the meat and drink of the body public. Withdraw one of them and it languishes, consumes and dies. If indifference becomes the prevailing character of a people, their motives to vigorous defense is lost and the hopes of their enemies are increased. Without religion, we may possibly retain the freedom of savages, bears, and wolves, but not the freedom of New England. If religion were gone, our state of society would perish with it, and nothing would be left which is worth defending. This was a speech given by the grandson of Princeton President Jonathan Edwards, chaplain of the Continental Army, eldest son of 13, Massachusetts the first state legislator, Timothy Dwight IV, Yale's fourth president. <laughs>